I'm Jill Miller, the Role Model Mama, five weeks postpartum at this point. And I want to share some work with you today that I've been doing on my own hand because handling a newborn is a lot of work on your hands, your palms, the grippers. So far, I've led you on a few moves for your core. Then we did a progressive series for shoulder, elbow, and now we get down to the hand. And I want to say that even though we're doing the hand, it's never a complete thing unless you're also integrating the rest of the soft tissues that are in that pathway, and that would be the neck and the elbow. So in order to do hand-me-down, which is our lesson for today, I want you to understand some connections in the palm of the hand. Um, and that is, here is his right palm. I want you to think about not just individual joints, but I want you to think of the spaces between the long bones of the hands. These are called the metacarpals. And there is a very fibrous connected tissue called periosteum that links each of these long bones together. And this space here can get congested and compressed from all the gripping and holding that you're doing all the time. And so this space is what we want to ad address so that we can uh, restore some of the natural space and the width in that palm. You hear about a plantar fasciitis? Well, this is a concept of palmar fasciitis, and so we're trying to eradicate that. One palm on top of a yoga tuna ball, and the other ball is going to stack on top of each interosseal space. Now, if you're confused about what that is by using the balls, the balls are a sensor to help you find these railroad tracks between the bones. You can also use your own hand to carve out that space. And so I'm just adding pressure, leaning in and stroking up and stroking down. Or if I'm stacking, and right now, by the way, I'm between the thumb and the index finger, I can also create a shear, a pin and spin by rotating the ball. And then I go between the second and third metacarpal. And I'm allowing my left hand, that's the hand that's down, to just coat its way around the ball. So I'm not adding any tension, I'm not squeezing this. Of course, there are techniques that you could use, a little PNFing, to add some interesting action there. But I just want to keep this as simple as possible. And then going to the third to fourth metacarpal and thinking about that space. And this is a narrower space. And so I'm actually going to use my the fingers on my top hand to try to nuzzle in, into the top portion while the ball nuzzles into the bottom. It feels really good. And then between the fourth and the fifth, and I'm going to use my hand. And I'm thinking about trying to and this isn't going to happen. I'm thinking about trying to roll this bone away from or traction it away from while I gently maneuver the ball up and down. And I do feel a little bit of stinging um, and that's a safe sting. I feel a sting in the connective tissue underneath the skin. Now there is vasculature here. You see the bul my bulging veins. Um, so you want to be aware of that. You're not trying to destroy the vasculature of your hand. You need it. And then finally, just a good kneading the dough here, juicing the orange, and you can find this in the role model book, this technique. You're just trying to pivot the ball again and again and letting the ball ring its way into the palm. And then to finalize this, just to cap it off, a little mobilization or a stretch, I call this the claw. So I'm bending my little digits, little phalanges, as much as possible. And then the other hand does the same thing and it caps its way around. So my fingers are actually going into the the metacarpal phalangeal joints here. And then you bend those knuckles backwards like a jaw. It's a jaw claw. At the same time, this hand is trying to flex forward. So there's battle, a battle here. I'm also squeezing into, I'm adducting the finger. So there's lots of different actions you can do here. And when you come out of that, boy, hand me down. This is a nice hand to finally be at rest instead of shaped like this one. Can you see the difference in my hands? These are hands at rest. This is a hand-me-down and this is a claw hand. So obviously you go to the second hand and this will pay off in the long term with all the handling and gripping and holding that you're doing of your newborn or of your cell phone or of whatever things you're holding in life. Enjoy.